Hello and welcome back to Python programming for all level computer science. This is video four and today we're going to be looking at maths. So let's begin. We've covered variables, if statements, strings, and now we're going to be covering maths. And as you can see, we've got a few more videos to get through. So Python's got some really neat features, but it's um, picky about the type of numbers it likes to work with. Um, we're talking about integers, those are whole numbers, five or minus 10, and floating point numbers or decimal point numbers like this, or pi. If your number is set as a string, think of it as a text, even if it looks like a number. Python won't be able to crunch any numbers or do any maths on these numbers. It's a bit of a limitation, but we'll get into solving these problems in this chapter. So Python comes with its own set of math tools, kind of like a toolbox for numbers. Inside there is a big maths module um, packed with all sorts of functions to help you crunch numbers and solve math problems. It's like uh, having a sort of a super, supercharged calculator at your fingertips. I've chosen four and I'm going to do these. I've got max and min, pow, sum and round and I'm going to do these in Python. Or in Python, let's look at the first one. The min and the max functions can be used to find the lowest or highest value in an interval. So basically a list. So here I've got x equals min 10 100 1000, y equals max 5 10 25. Have a little guess at what this is going to do. I'm going to print out x and I'll print out y. Let's run this. As you can see, it's going to give me 10 and 25. So the minimum value from x from this list here and the maximum value from this list here. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure where you'd use this, but that is one of the one of the inbuilt functions. Okay, let's take a look at the next one, the pow function. Okay, so pow. Power a b function returns the value of x to the power of b a to the b. Okay, so return the value 5 to the power 3 is the same as 5 times 5 times 5. We know this. So what's going to happen? So here I've done pow 5 to the 4. So it should do 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So what would that equal? Run module and we'll find out. Okay, 625. If we print a, what I could do is say in here, comma, 5 to the power 4 equals, and then run it again, 5 to the power 4 equals 625. So let's have a look at the next one. Okay, we've got the sum function, and this returns the sum of all the elements in a list or a tuple. Tuples we'll get to. My list equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So print the sum of my list. What should it return? You tell me. Okay, should we have a look? Run module, 15. And finally, let's just bring this out of the way. We've got the round function. So rounds, this is brilliant, we use this all the time. Round, rounds a number to the nearest integer. Print round, 314, I think you see this is pi, 314159 to two. Well, let's have a look at this. It should be the two decimal places. Let's have a see. Run module, and there we go. Let's move my little um, cursor out of the way, 3.14. So it's gone to two decimal places. Because we've chosen the two in here, it's, it's two decimal places. Okay, just interesting fact, if I do this to the, let's say the 15, round to the nearest 15, there's only five numbers, but if I run this module, yeah, it will not, it won't put zeros in, it will just round it to everything that's there. Okay, so we can't add extra zeros, not that we would need to, but that's, that's just a little point. Okay, I'll put it back to two. Okay, so that's basic maths, but we can go one step further. We can use libraries, okay? If you want to use some cool math tricks in Python, like finding square roots or using pi, you'll need to bring in a special helper called the maths library, okay? Think of it like inviting a math genius to help you out. To do this, you just type in at the top, import maths at the very beginning of your program, okay? And here we can do a lot more different things, basic arithmetic, we could do that before, but it takes it a little bit further. Trigonometric functions, exponential and logarithmic functions, constants, rounding numbers, power and square roots, absolute values, factorials, degrees and radian conversions, and hyperbolic functions. And I'll go through a little bit about all of those in Python. Okay, so that's importing maths. Let's have a little look at the first one. Okay, so if we take this first one, basic arithmetic using standard operations. So you can perform... I mean, we can do this the easy way. If I go run module, this is the sort of thing we're going to get. Okay, I formatted this string 
so it prints addition but it's also mixing if you if you see the um the brackets here the um, curly brackets we can mix sort of variable numbers with um with words without having to put commas or um or pluses in so that's the ease that's the basic one where are you going to use that i'm not sure but we'll move on if we look at example two here you can see we've got trigonometry functions so yeah the math library provides trigonometry trigonometry functions such as sine cosine and tangent which are essential for dealing with angles so i've done a couple of things here i've imported math okay first of all we import math for for all of these math for example one example two all the way down um, angle equals math.pi so we're, in, we're in bringing pi from the import library and we'll divide it by four we know that pi basically in radians if you do a level maths is 180 degrees but if we divide it by four we should get 45 degrees okay so let's have a little look at this so i can print it the old-fashioned way or i can use my formatted strings here let's have a look run module yep so as you can see here i've printed math sign and then the angle which is the variable okay next one again a level a level maths exponential and logarithmic functions so we're going to import math to number is five and we want to know what's the exponential of this number using this and we also want to know what the um, natural log value is okay we've put a number in a five so if i do this we're a module so we've got the exponential of the number five yeah and we've got the natural log of the number five like so number four we're going to look at constants okay and we're going to use pi as we just talked about but we're going to use pi and we're going to use um Hewler's number for our calculations so we're importing pi let's have a little look run this module okay shows us pi value i've just put it in so you can see pi maths pi prints it to is it 15 decimal places yeah and then Hewler's numbers there as well okay all to be using our calculations so if we just wonder if we could add print math.py plus math or e or a module and add them both together okay so so we can do various things like that let's have a look at number five this time we're looking at rounded functions okay we're going to round a number okay we can use round we can use floor and we can use seal for the ceiling okay so i've just given the easy way of doing it print round number number being 3.72 if we run this yeah i've got the round of it i've put just round in no decimal places yeah floor is three seal is four okay so that's rounding then we've then we touched upon this earlier power and um, square root okay so as you raise the number to the power using maths.pow or calculate the square root using math.sqrt square number square root so let's run this and you'll have a little look okay so using the format in four to the three is 64 four times four times four the square root of four is two okay notice when you um are squaring and also when you're dividing it also it always puts it to one decimal place okay but here again one decimal place okay seventh one so we're importing math this time we want to determine the absolute value of a number okay with that we're going to use math.absolute abs Okay, so absolute value of minus 10, it should be 10. But let's have a little look. Absolute value of minus 10 is 10. Or I can just print it again. Easy way, or the formatted way. Once you start getting into coding, it's always good to use the formatting function. We can do um, factorial. Calculate the factorial of a number using math.factorial. This time we've got five. So what's the uh, math factorial of five? We run this. Okay, and the factorial is 120. Again, those doing A-level maths should be quite familiar with this. Number nine, we're going to use degrees and radians and convert between the two. I've, I've gone into a little bit more detail about this. So I'm importing maths again, as always. Angle degrees is 180. In radians, obviously, that's pi. Pi equals 180 degrees. I've done some formatting, but then I'm going to do some rounding here just to show you when we're converting um, degrees. I've also added the old-fashioned way where we're going to use a string, comma, the variable and then another string followed following the comma there okay so run this so 180 degrees in radians yep pi radians is 180 degrees but 45 degrees in radians is 0 0.79 and i've done that two decimal places as you can see there 
Okay. And then finally, if I go to the recent and I open number 10, again, A-level students, hyperbolic functions. Okay. We can use the hyperbolic functions such as sine h, cos h, and tan h. Yeah. And we're accessing it via doing this and putting our number in. Okay. Where number is a created number variable called 1. So you want to find sine h, the hyperbolic function, sine h of 1 cos h of 1 and tan h of 1 and let's have a little look if I run this module and there you go sin h cos h and tan h okay so that's it that is it for the examples I'm now going to go back into the presentation because I've got three little challenges I want you to have a little look at okay okay here's three programs we're gonna have a little look at what we can do in terms of decimal doubling big square root and shape selector okay firstly we're gonna decimal doubling Ask the user to input a number with several decimal places. Multiply this number by three and display the result. Update the previous program to display the result rounded to the nearest whole number. Okay, nice and easy. Big square root. Ask the user for an integer greater than a thousand. Calculate the square root of that number and display it rounded to the nearest whole number. And then finally, shape selector. Display the message, type one for square or two for rectangle. If the user selects one, ask them for the length of one side and display the area. If they choose two, ask the length and the width and calculate the area. If they enter anything else, provide an error message. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one, maths decimal doubling. In this one, we've imported maths as always. We're gonna ask the user for a number with several decimal places. So number equals float, obviously, because it's a decimal. Um, input, enter a number. Remember, two brackets at the end, two brackets at the front. Multiply the number by 3 and display the result. So we're going to times it by 3. Okay, simple maths. And then rounded result equals round result. So we're going to take the result, okay, which is this number times by 3. Yeah, and we're going to round it. Okay, print and formatted the text again. The rounded result is rounded result. Basically this, the rounded result. Okay, so run module. So several decimal places, four point, let's go silly. And there we go. The result is 13.6969. The rounded result is rounded it to, the, to an integer, a whole number, 14. Okay, first one done, nice and easy. Let's take a look at the second one, big square root. Again, it should be fairly straightforward. We're gonna import maths. Ask the user for an integer greater than 1,000. So this time, because it's a whole number, we just need to use integer. Okay, then we're going to use um, math.square because we've imported maths, math.square for the number. Yeah, and then I've rounded, I'm going to use round again, rounded square, and round, is, round to the nearest whole number and use some formatting. Okay, so run this. Let's go for a really big number. Rounded square is like so. But okay, if I change this and put a one after it, yeah, and I change this to float, then, and I put some decimal numbers in, run module, okay. Okay, it's gonna do it to that one decimal place. Let's have a look, okay, because I've put comma one in there. And then finally, I've had to go into a little bit more complex coding, but stuff we've covered before in previous videos. Challenge three, shape selector. Import maths, I wanna give people a choice, either choice one or choice two. Somebody's gonna type in either one or two. If they type in one, if the choice equals equals one, ask that this is gonna be the square. So it's gonna side length equals float input, area equals side length times times two, print in format of the area of the square, and then here, length times width, because I'm gonna use a, for choice two, I'm gonna do a rectangle. So I need two inputs, length and width, and then also there's an error message if I don't put the correct number in. So let's run this. Let's do two for rectangle. Okay, 45 point this, enter the width, 34, and there we go. Okay, from there, have you any ideas how you would do round? There's one for you. How could you round that to two decimal places? I'll leave that with you. Okay, back, because I've got a few more challenges uh, which I'm gonna leave on screen. Let's have a look. And then I'm going to leave this one, which you can pause and work through. There's eight different challenges here. I've taken three of them in the previous slide, but 
have a little go at these, use them for practice and see how you get on. And message me in the comments if you want to um, find the answers that I've done. But that is it for the maths video. That's video four over and done with. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.